Hello everyone. Welcome to UPSC Digital Library. Welcome to the complete course on Ancient Indian History. So far, we have seen two videos in this course. The first was the introduction class and the second was chapter one in which we saw the geographical features and their impact on the Indian history. Because if we understand how geography plays an important role in a country or in any other part of the global village, it will be very, very easy to understand how the history would be framed. In this chapter, we will try to understand what is the prehistory of India. And then we will also look at an example of the one of the oldest civilization or near or at our nation. Now, why I am saying near or at our nation? This answer will be also looked into at the later stage in this video. So, let us quickly start chapter 2, Prehistoric India and the Harappan culture. Now, before we proceed further, before we start mugging up the facts, we need to understand the story. As per the Darwin's theory of evolution, we all have evolved from an ape. Now, if you look at this picture carefully, there must have been a time wherein all our hands and feet were used for traveling purpose. But there must have been some time wherein where we would have tried to stand on just our two feet and thus our hand would have become free. कभी ना कभी तो ऐसा हुआ होगा कि चार पैरों पे चलते चलते हमको ये रियलाइज होना शुरू हो गया होगा ये एक दिन में नहीं हुआ होगा दिस वुड नॉट हैव हैपेंड इन वन डे बट ओवर अ सीरीज ऑफ इवेंट्स लेट्स से 100 लेट्स से 1000 इयर्स और 2000 इयर्स वेयर इन वी वुड हैव फेल्ट दैट वी कैन मैनेज एंड वी कैन वॉक इन टू लेग्स एंड देन व्हाट विल हैपन our hands will become free to do other works. Other works such as picking up objects or eating something with just our hands. Or let's say we can walk also and we can eat also. Otherwise, if you look at any other animal such as a dog, a dog will first of all sit and with first of its two feet, with its paws, it will try to hold the food and then eat the food. I hope you guys are getting this point. So, this remarkable evolution must have taken a lot of time in which now we have got an erect spinal cord though generally it is in the form of double S shaped. Right now, our spinal cord is in double S shaped. Okay, we will not go much into the biological details but the main thing what I want to tell you is from 4 feet we came to 2 feet which has helped us to increase our height. Now, if we are walking on 4 feet, our range of seeing at things is much lesser whereas let's say you are in, in standing in a forest in, in a grassland. Now, if you stand up you can see above the grass and you can find out your enemies. So this was very, very important thing that has happened in the past. Second, very important thing in the history, what happened was the discovery of fire. Now, initially, how individuals would have come to know about fire was through thunderstorms or through the fires that break out in the, in the forest. Now, Initially, they would have got scared from the fire and they would have run away. Because it feels pain once we get burned. But slowly, as they started walking, their hands became free. They would have realized if they start playing with stones and if they start striking stones together, it might generate fire. And even if they take any, any wooden piece and if they start rubbing it on another surface, it may also generate fire. So this also would have not happened in one day. This also might have happened in India at some point of time, might have happened in Australia at another point of time. So do not, uh, do not exactly learn what are the dates in ancient history because we do not have any written records for them. Through the archaeological scientific evidence, we try to analyze 
that the, this might have happened at so and so time. I hope this point is also clear. Now, when we talk about history, obviously we talk about these terms such as BC and AD. We also talk about BCE and CE. So, what are what are these terms? So, BC stands for before Christ, before the birth of Christ. Now, you will also find AD. Some people say that this is after death, but this has generally come from a Latin word Anno Domini, which means in the year of the Lord. So, right now, if we say that 2020, so we will say 2020 AD. So, you have to go back in time up to 1 AD. Now, before that, it will be 1 BC. And then this will happen in reverse order. 2 BC, 3 BC. So, this way, this chronology will happen. Same thing, this BC and AD, same thing you can replace with before common era, which is BCE and CE common era. Now, most of the countries, they are using BC and AD because you all know that the Britishers have had huge colonies in, in most of the countries in the world. That is why, that is why even in India, we, were for, for, we started following this BC and AD sort of calendar around 200 years ago. Why 200 years ago? Because from 1858, Government of India Act was passed and we were actually following the rules that were laid out by the British government. I hope this is clear. Let us proceed. Now, if we talk about our prehistoric time, we, as I have already told you, we do not have any written records for them. Whereas we, we still have a lot of archaeological remains through which we are able to reconstruct the history. Hamare paas koi likhit praman nahi hai. Lekin hum archaeological evidences se pata lagate hai ki prehistoric time me kya hua hoga. Alright. Now what are those archaeological things through which or remains through which we come to know about our prehistory? These includes the sto stone tools, the pottery, the other artifacts and the metal implements. And thus, this development of archaeology has helped us a lot to understand about the life and culture of the prehistoric period. Now, when we will talk about prehistoric period, we will talk about a few ages. All right. The first will be Paleolithic, which is before 10,000 BC. Second will be Mesolithic, which will be before 10,000 to 6,000. Third will be Neolithic, which will be between 6,000 to 4,000. And then we'll talk about Metal Age, where I have not specified the time. Even right now also, the Metal Age is going on. We still use metal. We can also say that right now, the Technology Age is also going on, because now we are immensely using technologies. The Industrial Revolution happened. And right now, this, this is, you can say, the fourth phase of the Industrial Revolution, in which we are talking about big data, and how we can virtualize the things or how we can automate the things. All right. Anyways, sir, what is the meaning of Paleolithic? What is the meaning of Mesolithic? What is the meaning of Neolithic? See, lithic means stone, means patthar. Lithic ka matha, matlab hota hai patthar. Paleo means old. That is why it is old stone age. Meso means middle. That is why it is middle stone age. Neo means new and that is why it is new stone age. I hope this point is clear. One more thing is, once we, after the Neolithic age, that means after 4000 BC, when we will enter into metal age, please know that first we came to know about copper and bronze. All right. So iron was not probably the first metal to be discovered. So, after this, we came to know about iron and we came to know about copper and bronze. We came to know about gold and silver. Later on, approximately from 1500 BC, we came to know about iron. So, when we will study Harappan civilization or Harappan culture, please know that generally this question used to be asked previously in the exam 
that which of the following metal was not known to the Harappan culture and examples were gold, silver, uh, this copper and iron. So the answer is iron. Iron was not known to them. All right. So we will look into that. One more thing is these date ranges also what I am telling you. These are also not uniform. Okay. These are just an approximation. So don't come back to me saying that in so and so book some other date is mentioned and in this book you are telling that this is the right date. All right. I have already told you these periods are not uniform. Okay. And the dating of this is done scientifically. One of the technique is radiocarbon dating. It is measured on the base of loss in the carbon in organic matter. One technique is radiocarbon dating. Her organism may carbon, hoga, hydrogen hoga, or oxygen. Hoga. These are the organic elements based on which we are made up of. Now, we will lose carbon year after year. So, due to this loss of carbon, we are able to predict the age. Another such dating method is dendrochronology. This refers to the amount, the number of tree rings. Let us have a look at them one by one. Now, this is an example of radiocarbon dating. Now, if you look at this animal, let's say at the time of death, this animal will have 100% of its carbon-14 element in it, the isotope of this, all right. After a few years, 50% of the carbon-14 will be lost. After, let's say, these many years, only these this much percentage of carbon-14 will be left. And after these many years, this much percent of carbon-14 will be left. So, based on this, we can identify the age of this. How exactly now this is identified? This is a subject of archaeology. But I hope I have given you guys a rough idea. Let us move forward. I also told you about one more term that is dendrochronology. So now you guys can see this. This is this is a tree. And let's see if we cut a tree. Okay, first of all, I'm not encouraging anybody to cut tree. Okay, save environment because at the end of the day, that is how we will sustain, uh, we will get a sustainable development, all right. We need uh, a good environment and a good nature for our survival. So, if you cut a tree or let's say there's a, there's a broken tree kept and you cut it, you will see these sort of ring structures in that. Based on that also, you can find out the age of a tree. For example, here, let's say this is 1960. Now, if you start counting this, up to 10 you will you can say that 10 years have so far passed so this way also the age is being found by the archaeologist and you know there are a few trees who live for 100 years who live for 1000 years and thus it could be helpful for archaeologists to find out if there is something relevant to them i hope this point is also clear now as i told you we will talk about Paleolithic, we will talk about Mesolithic, we will talk about Neolithic. Paleo means old, Meso means middle, Neo means new and then we will talk about the Metal Age. So here first we are starting with Paleolithic or Old Stone Age. Now please know that generally these kind of sites Paleolithic are found near the water sources because, because people were not knowing about agriculture. All right. So they used to stay near the water sources such as pond, rivers or sea. It is because it was easy for them to fetch water for their drinking purpose. Now they also used to stay in rock shelters or caves. They rarely used to stay in huts made up of leaves. So that means they do not know how to make homes also. So this was a salient feature of Paleolithic age. I hope you guys are able to imagine. If not, let us have this, this pick. You can see this cave. People are staying over here and they are hunting animals and they are eating. When they used to be free, they used to draw inside the caves also for passing their time. All right. So food was obtained by hunting animals and gathering edible plants and animals. That is why they are not agriculture people. They are not farmers. They are hunter gatherers. All right. And, and what, what tools they used to use? Suppose hand sized 
they used to get stones and pebbles near the water sources nadi kinare near the river we will get these these stones they used to gather them and they used to make their hunting tools from them all right now as this i have already told large pebbles they used to get near the river surface now if they have to hunt a large animal such as a uh, let's say a bull big bull for hunting so one person it's very difficult for one person to hunt that so multiple people used to work together and used to do hunting i told you they used to do painting also sometimes when they were free and some paintings have been found in places such as bheem betka bheem betka is in madhya pradesh all right so these are some of the famous sites of the paleolithic or old stone age these are some of the examples here some of the prominent paleolithic sites have been mentioned in this map you can pause this video and you can locate them sometimes in upsc mains they ask you a few paleolithic sites and they ask you to locate them on the map all right it's because we, you do not have to mug up things you have to visualize also let us proceed further from paleolithic now people move to mesolithic here I, i have already told you what was the characteristics of people log kaise rehte the kya khate the kaise jeete the ye maine aap logon ko bata diya now how was the lifestyle of people in mesolithic now the lifestyle of mesolithic this date ranges approximately 10000 bc to 6000 bc all right now this was a traditional this was a tradition transitional phase between the old stone age and the new stone age okay some of the remains have, are these are some of the places where mesolithic remains have been found here also people used to have some paintings and engravings in the rock shelters which also tell about their social and eco economic life now another important thing is here the stone tools that they were using earlier they were using big big stones now the size of the stone got significantly reduced some of these stone tools got reduced so much that they were not more than 5 cm in size and such stone tools were known as microliths micro means small all right and lith means stone so even very small stone tools were also used this you can see this is a very small small stone tool being used where this was used sir now you all know that they were hunter gatherers that means they used to hunt the animals and they used to eat they used to collect fruits also and edible plants also to eat now as the size of the stone tool got reduced so now they were able to hunt small animals also now you tell me you go to a pond do you think with a big stone it is easy to catch a fish or let's say you have a small stone tool and which you which you tie it to a stick and then you try to hunt a fish obviously this case would be easier and that is why the hunting from big animals to the small animals also started they also started using bow and arrow because now they realized that small stone tools can also be used they started staying at a place for a longer time because they learned what is known as horticulture now hortic i will i will explain you this see it they do not became a full scale uh, settled people or they do not realized what exactly is agriculture completely lekin kya hua let's say when they were eating fruits or or something sometimes the seed will fall and they will see that the plants are growing from there they they must have felt that if we take care of these plants so we don't have to go to another place we can stay here we can take care of these plants in the meanwhile these plants are growing we can catch the other animals for hunting we can catch fish for hunting and in the meanwhile once these plants will grow we will get something to get eat from these plants also i hope you guys are understanding this at the same time you guys will also realize that they also realized that not all animals will hurt them some animals such as dog deer boar and ostrich they were not hurting them dog became a human being's friend they can even stay with the deer deer will stay with them 
if they will take care of deer deer will not run away later on they can they can cook and eat them same goes with ostrich now if you know in india in in prehistoric time even ostrich evidences have also been found so they could have caught the ostrich egg and that could that could also have been used for eating so that is why this microlith stone, uh, stone tools became so important in their life that sometimes during their burials when they were dead these microlithic tools and shells of this ostrich and and the animal bones have been buried along with them maybe they might have felt that let's say somebody will die let us give them give them these facilities so that in their next birth they will get these things by default so that means they might have thought about rebirth we don't know but these are the evidences so let's talk about neolithic or new stone age now so this is the date range for this remarkable progress has happened in human civilization in new stone age all right these are a few examples where these sites are located all right and these are the sites from tamil nadu and andhra pradesh you can you can read them you can pause and read and from the map also you can identify the neolithic sites all right now one remarkable discovery what happened in neolithic was the discovery of wheel now the traveling will become very 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 easy apart from traveling now they can make pottery they can store food they can cook food easily i hope you guys are able to understand this so now they don't have to eat raw food they can cook food and they, they can eat this was a very very significant discovery that happened in the neolithic time or the new stone age all right now what happened was they understood what was agriculture now in mesolithic that was a transitional phase they were they were doing experiments and trying to see okay if, if we are if we are catching these plants and eating if if the seeds fall whether it will grow or not by this time they realized that they can do agriculture instead of the grass huts they switch to mud brick homes now when they don't have to travel from one place to the other in search of food they can settle in one place for a long time as long as the soil is fertile they can grow crops don't you think they will get some free time if people will get some free time they will start enjoying together also their social life will in, improve as a result what started happening was they started polishing their stone tools all right in paleolithic time in old stone age time they had big stones in mesolithic they had microliths also they had small stone tools in neolithic they started polishing their stone tools and they realized if they polish their stone tools it for it was easy to cut through the animals and hunt them all right now those who are pure vegetarians okay they might be feeling little awkward but see we most of the 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 human beings in the earlier times they used to eat animals right now you will say no sir we have read in rick vedic era and other era that they were not eating cows and all yes that was the later stage this is before that time all right that rick vedic era started from 1500 bc right now we are talking for somewhere around 4000 bc please imagine this time difference all right now they used to they started growing wheat barley rice millets in different parts of areas at different point in time so it didn't happen that at 4000 bc they started growing wheat in all parts of the world maybe at 4000 bc wheat was grown let's say in india so let's say in mesopotamia barley was grown all right rice cultivation was extensive in the eastern area okay now they also started making clothes and started wearing clothes made up of cotton and wool in the neolithic age so this was a remarkable development in the human civilization now as i told you first we will see about paleolithic then mesolithic then neolithic then comes the metal age so now let's try to see what happened in metal age in metal age people realized that they can extract out metal from their ores now if metal is discovered this is a very very big discovery for those of you who do not know 
how metal is obtained from their ores this process is known as melting by applying heat to the ore the base metal can be extracted this is used in metallurgy process by this method many metals can be obtained from their ore such as silver iron copper and other metals all right now don't go much into the detail i just wanted to get a rough idea of this all right so after the neolithic was followed this metal age in metal also we call this as chalcolithic age that is copper stone why copper because iron is not yet discovered first copper and bronze were discovered sir why still it is written as chalcolithic lithic means stone yes because they have not given up on stone tools along with those metals they were still using stone tools also all right i hope this point is clear now as they realized that they can obtain metal from their ores the people started traveling to different parts in order to obtain metals and hence the network of this chalcolithic culture expanded and people came to know about multiple other civilizations surviving in other parts of the world matlab logon ne travel karna shuru kar diya alag alag part of the world mein to obtain metal aur wo dusre logon se bhi unhone milna julna shuru kar diya most of these cultures have also grown along the river valleys one of the most important chalcolithic culture or this era one of the example is the harappan culture which we will see now all right now these are the examples in south india they developed along along these rivers all right now when the metal age started in other parts of the world okay in south india they were not using metals but slowly slowly by second millennium bc that means by 200 bc they there is also evidence that they started using copper and bronze all right now this age was followed by iron age iron age is somewhere around 1500 bc when the aryans entered the india and started staying in the india now how we know that iron was used because it is frequently referred in the vedas for which we have written records all right now the iron was also frequently used in megalithic burials also mega means big and lithic means stone matlab jab kisi ko hum maar kar dafnate hain when somebody dies and we bury them that time megalithic burials was used in south india very frequently all right megalithic means large stones and these graves are extensive in south india these are some of the sites where you can see now red and black pottery was also very extensive iron artifacts sickles and hoes all right these were found along with the burial pits this is an example as you can see the big stones so that is why these are known as megalithic burials there was a small hole also from where let's say you have buried somebody some of your relative or friend after a few years you guys can still pay tribute by putting in a few things inside this grave from this hole i hope this point is clear and from this map you guys can identify the megalithic sites also all right now let us understand the harappan civilization which forms a part of the metal age specifically talking it forms a part of the chalcolithic age wherein we talk about copper and we are still using stones okay i hope this point is clear now understand this now how how we came to know about this civilization in the year 1857 the railways were being constructed in the lahore multan uh, area this is right now in pakistan but earlier you know that pakistan bangladesh all of them were an integral part of india during that time the workers whatever underground buildings were coming they were destroying all of them but then when the archaeologists came to know they stopped wait a second wait a second you are destroying something which was very significant to the history so please let me tell you a lot of this civilization at the harappan site has been demolished due to this construction but still we were able to recover a few things and through those excavations we are able to tell about this civilization both these places are now in pakistan these earliest excavations were done in harappan in western punjab which is in western punjab and mohanjodaro 
all right these were the two most important cities of this civilization it was first called the indus valley civilization but remember later on other cities were also discovered away from such valley that is why the name was changed to indus civilization and why this name indus because most of the cities were near the river indus all right it is also known as harappan civilization because harappa was the first city to be discovered among this civilization i hope this point is also clear now these are the other sites which were excavated apart from harappa and mohenjodaro kot di jin sint kali bangan in rajasthan ropar in punjab banwali in haryana lothal surkotra and dholavira all these three are in gujarat now the larger cities are approximately a few hundred acres in size now if i talk about mohenjodaro this is the largest city and it has an area of about 200 acres i hope this is very simple and we can proceed further now in this map you guys can uh identify the prominent not uh, you can you guys can identify the prominent cities of the harappan culture all right you can pause this map you can try to visualize this and then you guys can proceed all right now when we talk about the important stages or phases of revolution of this harappan culture also it can also be divided into four parts pre harappan early harappan mature and late now this is the early and earliest time when they started to lead a set settled agriculture life matlab right now there will nomads people all right around this indus river and they started to live an agriculture life which was the pre harappan time in early in harappan they started from rural to urban lives and they started growing up towns this was the transition phase this is the main phase of harappan where in these big cities emerged out and lately in the late harappa the decline of this civilization started we we'll look at how the decline happened all right now if we study about this harappan civilization we need to understand a few salient features humko samajhna padega ki harappan civilization ki town planning kaise hoti thi what was the economic life what was the social life was there any art and culture there what was the script that these people were using was there some language that they were using was there any religion used by these people and when people used to die what was the burial method all right so let us have a look at these things one by one let us have a look at town planning now see right now if you go to big cities you will find that there's a colony there's another colony in a city there's one more colony one more colony so you can see that they're cutting each other at 90 degrees so that means the cities are designed in grid structure same way see even at that time in harappan culture the streets and lanes were cutting each other at 90 degrees they were laid out in grid structure if you look at these three cities harappan mohenjodaro and kali bangan they had their own citadel sir i don't understand what is this citadel that means the city had a place where the houses were on a lower side and a few of the houses were on the higher plane so this there might be difference that the rich class was staying there and the poor people were staying there or maybe the kings and the warriors were staying there and the normal people were staying there all right now one more remarkable feature is unlike the neolithic age their homes were not made of made of mud bricks okay it was made up of burnt bricks and moreover it were not made up of stone stone bricks okay this was a very very remarkable structure now houses were also made up of this grid pattern what is made right now you can see how beautifully the houses were structured so that its strength has remained right now even right now during excavations people have found out about those homes all right and even if we talk about the drainage system it was underground it was so beautifully designed all right all all those houses had had a drainage system which was interconnected which used to come over here and then it used to go out of the city so that means it's not like people first made their home and somebody else come and made their home the entire city was planned by some architect uh, uh, this uh, architects and then the city was designed 
such a beautiful civilization it was all right such a beautiful town planning it was here you guys can see an example to understand so this is you can say a citadel wherein you can see the upper city and this is the lower city this is just to help you to visualize i'm not sure you guys will find this in much of the books that you read all right now one more important thing is there was a great thing found that was a great bath in mohan jodaro now this was basically served as a ritual bathing purpose all right this is the measurement you guys can see this and it was so beautifully designed that behind uh, besides this bathing structure there were rooms also for changing clothes for both men and women and there was a place so that water can come inside this this bathing place all right and there was a place from where water can go inside and the surface was also made up of burned bricks so that water cannot seep inside all right you guys can see this in mohan jodaro the biggest building is a granary granary is a place wherein if, if you have food in abundance you can store that and this is the size of it in harappa also the granaries are found as many as six granaries now what does this signify this signify that people were not dying for food they were having food in abundance that is why they were storing food in granaries i hope you guys are able to understand this now this is the picture of the great bath you can see that people can get inside from both the corners all right and besides there were rooms where people could change clothes also this is the great bath this is an example of granary 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 so these ways granaries were there these are broken right now but if you try to visualize them you can visualize that granaries might have looked this way somewhere in the past where the grains would have been stored all right now if i talk about their economic life wheat and barley were their main crops that they used to grow apart from that sesame mustard and cotton were also grown now these animals were domesticated sheep goats and buffaloes now whether they knew about horses they were using horse or not this is not yet confirmed that is why in some of the exams such as ssc cgl and bank exams many times this question have been asked which of the following animal was not known to the indus valley civilization and the answer would be horse according to this all right now as there was food in abundance so not everybody has to get engage themselves in agriculture right now is everybody doing farm farming right now no there are a few people who are doing farming a few people are engineers a few are doctors same way when the food production was abundant there were a few people who were making bricks a few were cutting stones all right a few were making boats a few were making terracotta uh, toys and other stuffs all right and as this is a part integral part of the metal age bronze and copper vessels are also outstanding examples of the harappan uh, art and uh, this craft all right in some places red and black pottery is also found some places gold and silver ornaments are also found some places these beads are made up of semi precious stones all right now as people were staying in different cities mohan jodaro uh harappa kalibangan lothal different places so internal trade was also extensive internal trade takes place through barter system that time barter system was prevalent barter system means you give me wheat i will give you rice so currency was not in use during during harappan civilization all right so uh, now foreign trade was mainly done with mesopotamia afghanistan and iraq sir i have heard about afghanistan and iran was it, what is this mesopotamia so mesopotamia is right now pre, right now what you call as iraq all right all right some people also get confused it is egypt okay now uh, there is also much evidence of trade happening between indus and sumerian people now sumerian is south mesopotamian which you can also say south iraq people now if you look at this word mesopotamia it is this means between two rivers the actual meaning of this word mesopotamia means the land between two rivers now what are those two rivers between this city was flourishing one is euphrates and one is tigris all right i hope this point is also clear trade was of barter type now these were copper 
gold, tin and several precious, semi-precious stones were imported. Whereas the agricultural products, wheat, barley, peas, other things such as cotton, pottery, terracotta, fig grease, ivory products made from the, uh, uh, the elephant teeth, these were exported. All right. Now, various seals have also been found. Now, seals plays an important role. Let's say from India, I am sending something so, to Mesopotamia. So, in that container, if I will put a seal, so they can be reassured that, okay, this has come from India, from our Harappa. And if this seal is there, they can be sure that in between, the product has not been opened and tampered. I hope this point, even right now, seals are being used. And people say that if seal is tampered off, please do not accept the material. All right. Now, there's a place known as Lothal. Okay. This was the port city of the Harappan culture from where you find that the sea transport was also prevalent. These are a few examples of the seals of the Harappan civilization. Now, you will say how these people came to know about bull. See, if they have made the drawings of bull, if they have made the drawings of tiger, if they have made the drawings of elephant, that means they were knowing these animals, right? If they have made the drawings of a peacock, that means they knew these animals and birds. All right. Now, if I talk about social life, okay, so uh, they were having two pieces of clothes. Okay. Now, the every individual was wearing one upper garment and one lower garment. Even ladies were wearing jewelries also. All right. And the ornaments were made up of semi-precious and precious uh, metal also. Now, uh, at... Uh, various places, various articles have also been found, such as ivory, shell, stones and potteries in Mohanjo-Daro. Even combs, fish hooks, knives have been found. So that means they knew fishing also. All right. And even at places, they have found a plowing cart, which we log kheti in the karte hain, hal jotne ke liye. In, in a child's store, one terracotta toy, of a plow has also been found. So that means they knew the use of this plow which would have helped them to sow seeds also. See, this is where you have to relate things. If let's say you get a toy of let's say a tiger. So that means you have to imagine that those people were knowing about tiger. All right. So as I told you, fishing, uh, they knew about fish ho hooks. So fishing was also one of the regular occupation whereas bullfights and hunting were some of their famous pastimes all right now they they have not given up on stones and these were some of the weapons that they used to make apart from stones they started making these tools such as axes spearheads daggers of coppers and bronze now obviously if you will make a if you will make a knife of bronze instead of a stone it will be much much more stronger all right that was about stone uh, social life and as you can see here all right from this this excavation you you can see in this in this painting or in this uh this uh this uh, what has been excavated first of all you can see the beard so that means they they, they were having a lot of time to give time to uh, to their themselves second thing is just look at the design on their clothes so that means it is not that they were just wearing clothes they were having in they were living a very sedentary and very comfortable life and that is why they were getting time for such embroidery also look at the beautiful uh, this jewelry what they were wearing look at the blades what they were using for different purpose so their social life was very very good all right apart from that if i talk about their arts okay so one dancing girl one bronze dancing girl has been fr found from mohan jodaro so that means we are, they were very very good in art and culture they were very very good in sculpture making all right two stone statues had have been found from harappa all right pottery is another example of fine arts all right this many jars have been found many pots have been found they have been painted also many many pictorial motifs have been found motifs means many designs have been found all right so ideally what i'm trying to summarize to you is they were very very good in making sculptures arts potteries also these are a few examples just look at this these many years back these many years back from a bronze they have made this statue and look at the 
refinement look at how beautifully they have made this this statue look at the pottery what they have made look at the designs and motifs here look at the designs see such a beautiful art and culture was there in the harappan civilization i hope you guys are able to imagine this if i talk about script script means likhi means like let's say we write in hindi or english same way they must also have been following a script they also had a script which had 400 to 600 signs out of which 40 to 60 were basic and rest were their variants now mostly they were writing from right to left and then from left to right and then right to left this way they were following this is known as bostrophedon method which means writing in reverse direction in alternative lines okay let me show you that you can see this this is a sample so first they were writing this way and then they are writing in reverse and then in this way and then this in this reverse sir that means they have to learn two ways of reading right one is one is one is written s in this way and another is written no you can see their diagrams their our these diagrams all right if you laterally invert them if you look at in the mirror okay l will appear this way inside the mirror okay but what about o if you look at o in the mirror it will still look the same all right so these are a few signs which they were using all right they are yet to be deciphered all right so if if those signs will be deciphered it will become extremely easy for us to understand what they were writing right now we are unable to decipher decipher means to decode their script and hence we do not know much about them now scandinavian people parpola people felt that this was dravidian language a few soviet people have accepted this whereas other scholars believe that this is something related to the brahmi script now right now the hindi language which is written in devanagari lipi is somewhat derived from the brahmi script also most of the languages even gujarati is derived from brahmi and bengali is derived from brahmi script all right so this mystery still remains and once we will come to know about what these signs say we will be able to decode much about them as far as their religions are concerned okay it is thought that their main uh, male god was pashupati all right so that means they believed in idol worship okay now he is surrounded by four animals elephant tiger rhino and buffalo so that means they knew about these four animals also if they have drawn those four animals that means they know about these four animals and two deer appear at at the feet of this male deity they also believe in linga worship or yoni worship they felt that because of this reproduction this entire world is growing so they respected that even right now we find jyoti ling and other things all right even a female deity was also uh, worshiped all right and it is being represented in terracotta figurings all right so this is what happened they also used to respect and worship trees and animals and they also used to believe in ghost and evil forces because they were scared that let's say something happens in nature okay so these ghosts or the, they will destroy our agriculture products or some some calamity might happen some drought might happen so they were scared of all these things all right so this is an example of that male deity as i told you you can see the elephant you can see the tiger you can see buffalo you can see rhinoceros you can see the two deers at the foot you can see that this has three sides this is nose which is visible so it has three faces this has two horns you can also see the now this is what you see these are their language all right this is yet to be deciphered all right and this is you can see the female deity probably in the terracotta figurine we do not exactly know whether she was a goddess or not but this is what we have so far trying we are trying to understand from what we are trying to excavate i hope this is also clear now if i talk about burials they used to completely bury sometimes they used to burn and then they used to uh, bury so at lothal the burial pits have also been found with with burned bricks and at times coffins have also been used just you might have seen in in uh, in a religion such as christianity they first uh, put the dead body in a coffin and then they bury so such coffins have also been found in lothal even wooden coffins have also been found in at lothal now pot burials right now what we do is first we will burn and whatever ashes are present we put them 
in a pot and then we throw them in a river so that pot burials was also practiced at some places in lothal all right but whether the sati pratha was practiced or not we don't know there is no such clear evidence of that all right now what led to the decline of this great civilization because i will tell you after this civilization in the next chapter when we will talk about the aryans or when we'll talk about the vedic era you will see that again they they became they went back to uh, old times they, they were they were not so modern like the harappan people matlab harappa period mein log jitne modern the iske aage aane wale log itne advanced the hi nahi then what could have happened that this civilization declined there are many theories to this we do not know what happened exactly some people say flood came some people say river dried up some some people say that as they were living in a same place they knew agriculture but then the fertility lost and they exploited the land so much there might have been earthquakes that have happened but then what what we uh, think we can think is there were multiple cities in multiple parts now if earthquake will come it will come it should have come to one part of the uh, civilization if let's say drought will come it will come to one part of the civilization all these things do are given by various uh, scholars but they are not very very uh, you can say convincing all right some some scholars say that the final blow was given by the invasion of aryans now because this is also mentioned in rigveda that destruction of forts now you see harappan civilization the date is 2300 bc 2750 bc this was the date of the harappan civilization after this we do not know what happened then from 1500 bc we have written records for rigveda or the aryan people who came to india so it is thought that maybe these aryans came with horses and then they destroyed all these harappan civilization and then they established their own civilization all right and moreover in mohan chudaro it is also known as mound of the dead because in this city skeleton on top of the skeleton okay matlab ek ke upar ek ke upar ek ke upar ek lot of skeletons have been found out now this cannot happen that naturally people would have died okay this some something wrong has happened somebody have attacked them this is what might have happened and moreover it is felt that aryans who came to india who attacked these harappan civilization they might be having swift horses as we have already discussed that harappa in the harappan civilization there is no where mention about horses so maybe they were not aware about horses they were aware about elephants but then horses are very swift they are fast moving animals so maybe aryans had horses and then they might have become masters of these regions and they would have attacked this so still once that script is deciphered we will come to know a lot about this culture i hope you guys would have learned a lot about uh, the prehistoric time and the harappan civilization please connect with us on these three platforms because i will share notes pdfs and whatever is required for your preparations if you guys have not understood any point or any such thing you guys are free you guys can feel free to ping me and ask me and i will try my level best to answer your queries i'm getting multiple questions every day so at times my response might be delayed so i'm sorry for that hai na maine bilkul simple english mein explain karne ki koshish ki hai but still if you feel that my language was difficult you guys can ping me and say that sir ye point nahi samajh mein aaya i will explain that to you please share about our platform to maximum people so that we can help maximum people because everybody deserves an equal opportunity and believe me our platform is absolutely free the fee is zero i will never ever ask for any free fee so keep learning guys keep learning and we will come back with our chapter 3 god bless you all